Hi everybody, welcome to this uh, presentation with Lohilo Food. My name is uh, Frederick Iverson, I cover the consumer goods sector here at uh, ABG. And with us today we have Tyrone Anderson who will uh, give us a short presentation of around 20 minutes and then we will uh, wrap it up with a short Q&A. Uh, but again, try to, to wrap this up within 25 minutes or so. And with that I will hand the word over to Tyrone. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to Lohilo Foods and this short journey of where we are heading. Next, please. So, where are we coming from? Uh, this is Småland, for those who doesn't know that. That's the southern part of Sweden. We are in, from the beginning, an ice cream company that has been uh, in the market for over 14 years. Um, we are developing ice cream uh, as a foundation and we have been one of the first companies in the world to launch a sugar-free ice cream, protein ice cream and also low lactose ice cream. In 2017 we expanded outside of Sweden with, into Finland, that was the first country uh, abroad and uh, we are, that is still our biggest export market. In 2019 the company decided to move into other categories. So we launched uh, beverage and uh, snacks uh, during that year. In 2020, we moved into also functional products like paddle and stuff like that. And uh, last year, we also uh, were uh, in an IPO and went in the NASDAQ stock exchange market. So that's a short background of the company. So we are in the base, an ice cream company that has moved into other functional areas. Next, please. So, where do we find our insights from? Yeah, it's uh, very easy. Uh, there are mega trends around in the world. This is one report that comes every three years and we read it from uh, the first page to the last one. And from this one, uh, we actually can spot initial trends that are coming in the future. Lohilo has an ambition to be a trend setting when it comes to new functionalities. And we are launching new products into new categories uh, from time to time. And we are also looking and traveling around the world to find new uh, positions uh, in the market. We translate these mega trends into uh, food trends. And based on that, we develop products. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, product development is a big part of our company. Uh, and uh, we have a really, really uh, good people working in this uh, department, as it seems. Next slide, please. This is the portfolio that we carry today. Uh, as you see, this is a mix of own br uh, brands that we own uh, as a company, but also distribution agreements. We have distribution agreements in NYX, uh, the uh, no added sugar ice cream, in Halo Top, the local uh, ice cream from US, and also in Hagen Das, uh, one of the biggest uh, brands in ice cream in the world, but also in Bobby's, the Hawaiian uh, mochi ice cream. So these uh, four brands are distribution agreements that we have and that we are buying products and selling on the Swedish market. Alvesta Glass, uh, together with Jana Glass and Superfruit are our own brands that we own uh, and uh, that we are trying to sell and develop into the Swedish market uh, specifically. But the big brand is Lohilo, and this is where you see a lot of different products in different categories. And that is the brand that we are focusing on. So Lohilo is the main brand that we are, we are developing for the future in, in the company. Next slide, please. So what is Lohilo? Uh, it's, as I see it, one of the most brilliant uh, brand names that you can have. It's low, high, low. So we're talking about low calories. We think that's a mega trend that will uh, be in the market for many years to come. We see that consumers are, are concerned about what they put uh, into themselves and what they eat, and they want to lower their part of uh, calories. So low calories is one of the pillars that we are looking into for driving product development for the future. Then we're talking about high functionality. Functionality is key for us uh, in the future. And we think that uh, the consumers are really, really looking for these kind of functions in products and are willing to pay for it. Therefore, 
the high functionality is of the essence for Lohilo Foods in, into the future. We also think that uh, clean label products or low additives will be of concern for consumers. We have seen uh, an, a development into clean products with few ingredients, uh, without out any artificial pro uh, ingredients uh, exploding in the markets. So we think that these three megatrends will stand and last throughout the coming years. And therefore, this is basically the formula where we look into it, uh, when we decide about new products or new brands that we will distribute or buy or uh, develop on our own. So this is the formula behind Lohilo Foods, basically. Next slide, please. So what's the business idea? Simply said, we want to Lohilify the world. That means that we want to bring the brand to consumers across the globe. Uh, Lohilo is the main brand for us as a company, and that is the one that we will develop for the future. We do that by introducing and launching new and innovative products within different functional categories. Um, we are, as I showed in the beginning, uh, the first slide, uh, we have been in these functional categories since 2019. And that meant that we were four or five years behind our competition. That means also that the fitness focus that uh, everybody else is fighting within is more or less occupied. We will be there, but we will not win that. What we have identified is the beauty channel. Uh, this is a new and uh, rel relatively unknown uh, area for functional food. We are developing uh, products with collagen, for example, with beta carotene that are perfectly matching the beauty channel. So therefore, what we want to do is to win the beauty channel and be in the fitness channel. So this is uh, explaining a bit about our, why we are launching products in that kind of uh, channel. Next, please. The business model for Lohilo Foods is very, very simple. The distribution assignment that we have cover our cost to be able to develop and build Lohilo as a brand. And we do that through social media. So this is the very simple model that is very complex to implement in reality, but we stick to this. And this is the basic fundamental of how we run our business. Distribution assignments will always be a part of our journey for the next coming years. But we also see that we want to grow and expand Lohilo as the, as the main brand, as I explained before. Next, please. So what are we talking about when it comes to marketing? Uh, Lohilo is the main brand. We have a target group of females between 16 and 29. As most of you know, they are basically living with a phone attached to their hand. That means that all investments that we are doing to build a brand, to reach out to our consumers, goes through digital media. So social media and digital ad advertising is key for us to develop the brand for the future. We are also working with an ambassador model where we're drawing awareness and reach uh, throughout uh, our, the digital network. For the smaller uh, ambassadors, we use an, uh, an agency and a tool called Interlaced. And for the bigger ambassadors, we have them signed and contracted in-house. And we work with them on, on a daily basis to create contact uh, and drive uh, awareness around uh, the world. Next, please. Sales. So, uh, as I explained from the beginning, we are in uh, the basic foundation of the company comes from ice cream. And therefore, we have a, a very unique uh, setup in Sweden where we have direct distribution. It's only us and Unilever who has that that can reach out to all the stores in Sweden. But what we saw during last year was uh, that we need to focus more on the dry assortment and the beverage assortment. So therefore, we introduced a new sales force and that was implemented during the second half year uh, last year. Opportunities in the Swedish market are huge. We cover around 1500 stores today in retail. If you add on 3,000 uh, convenience stores available and 7,000 uh, special, uh, specialty stores, you understand that the potential of going from 1,500 stores to the 12,500 stores that are available is the key focus for our sales forces. 
So numeric distribution is the easiest way for us as a company to grow our sales. And that is what we're focusing on at the moment. But you're also working with profit because we don't only want to grow, we also want to make some money in the end. We would do that through a portfolio mix, a promotion and customer mix. So we know very exactly where we should drive and in what ch channel and customers that it will work. So we see that the profit comes when we do our homework correctly. Next, please. Export. This is the golden nugget, I would say, in Loilo Foods. Um, we are using a distribution model the same as the, uh, our clients are using it towards us in, in Sweden, basically. It's a very simple model with no risk for us as a company. We sign a, an agreement with a, in a geographical area, you can say, basically, with a distribution partner that gets exclusivity to sell uh, Lohilo products in that area. What they do then is to order products from us, they pay up front, and they pick up uh, the products in Växjö. That's where our central warehouse is. So we have an Xworks Växjö set up with prepayment uh, as a payment method. And then the uh, distribution partner picks up the goods and sell it in the local market. We are currently uh, managing around 30 different countries out of which five are identified as A countries. These are the ones that we are putting more resources behind and try to develop and grow into becoming one of the big uh, export markets for us. We have an ambition to set a new A country every six months. So basically two new export markets every year. That is what we can manage. And that is also the way to work that we have seen work in the past. We don't want to add on too many countries at the same time because we want to work closely with our distribution partners. We also set up key accounts around, behind all uh, countries that are working together with them to create business plan, promotion plans, and also review the performance quarterly. We are today present in more than 15 countries around the globe, but there are still many countries to uh, explore and also continents to explore. And that would come uh, closely in the future. Asia is specifically interesting for us as a company. Our product uh, communication fits very well into the Asian culture. Also, tastes, flavors work perfectly fine. We just launched uh, in China in February this year, and the response has been very, very positive. So what we are doing now is basically to build the Rohilo brand in, in China and in Asia. And uh, what we're doing and seeing now is that also when the volumes are going up, we need to look into finding production facilities uh, over there. And that is what we are working on at the moment as well. Next slide, please. Online or e-com. Uh, we have an omni-channel strategy uh, and we want our consumers to find our products in store, but also online. The good thing with online is that you can have a much broader assortment. And that is something that we are utilizing. We are working with optimizing the traffic into our web pages, but also we are also working with marketing and to try to drive visibility around the brand and build the brand. And that is how we see our digital web pages. So we want to see that we are driving traffic and sales, but we also want to build the brand. We have in the past been working with agencies to do this, um, but we have found out that our own resources uh, that we are using in a digital hub down in Vecfer uh, are doing this in a much faster and cheaper way. And therefore we have established an own e-com team that is working in-house uh, and can respond to all our consumers' needs. We are not only using the business to consumer solution uh, only for that, we have also redesigned it a little bit so we can use it for business to business solution. That means that our Salesforce can visit a small customer and help them to log in to the business to business solution that we have. And then the customers will basically uh, suit themselves and they will order through our web page. They will get deliveries sent from our warehouse in Vecfood directly to the stores. So it's a very simple, efficient way for us to utilize the Salesforce in a better way. Next, please. 
acquisition strategy. Yeah, what we are looking into here is that we want to work throughout the whole value chain. We are looking for synergies that will help us to grow the brand of Lohilo. That could be anything from a production facility uh, to a business to consumer uh, company. It could be a brand that fits into our portfolio on the low, high, low. But uh, the main thing for us is to have a synergy that we can pick out of this. So we have a very clear acquisition strategy that we want to acquire one to two companies or brands per year, not more, uh, because we want to integrate them and take care of them in a very good way. You might have seen that we bought a company called Superfruit uh, a couple of months ago, and that we are in now in full speed to integrate. And that will take us another couple of months before that is done. But we already see now the benefits of that. As an example, Superfruit had only a numeric distribution in retail Sweden of 100 stores. And now we are taking two to three new stores a day uh, and uh, driving up the availability of these fantastic products. Next, please. Financial summary of 2020. Yep, as you see, we have been growing very, very fast during the year. We grew 74% last year, and we are seeing that that's coming mainly from the distributed brands. We also see that the gross margin has gone down a bit during 2020, and that is driven by the increased volumes from distributed brands. There we act more like a wholesaler, and uh, as most of you know, the wholesale distribution uh, margins are lower compared to our own brands. Therefore, we have a strategy to drive our own brands and make them grow faster uh, throughout the coming years. And after the quarter one result, as you see here, our own brands are actually growing faster than the distributed brands, and we also see that the gross margin are uh, following that. The uh, overall uh, strategy for the company is to grow profitably, uh, but growth is uh, of key essence here. Therefore, we see that we are losing a bit of money uh, during last year, and that is coming from that we cleaned out a big part of our portfolio, basically one third was cancelled due to low rotation or low profitability. So we see that the cleaning that we have done will pay off now into the future. We also see that uh, quarter one this year started off with uh, a 12.5% growth. Uh, it might not seem too much. 6.2% uh, comes from our organic growth here in Sweden. Uh, and uh, also Superfruit are kicking in with another 6%. The positive thing uh, is that Sweden is growing 20%. And that is for me an amazing result uh, in the pandemic world that we are living at the moment. Our export business uh, lost 22%, and that comes very uh, straightforward out of that restrictions kicked in in March last year. And we have had restrictions in our export markets throughout the whole quarter one this year. Uh, so that explains that number, basically. Next, please. That was it from Lohilo Foods. Uh, this is what you see fr in front of you is the new vision that we are launching. To become and stay the ultimate version of you is what we are aiming to give to all of our consumers and friends around the globe. And that is the first uh, show of this uh, to uh, the public, but you will see it coming much, much more in the future. That was it from my side, I think. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. Um... Very interesting indeed. Uh, a few questions uh, from yep. my side. Uh, so, so firstly, my, my assessment was that you still try to, to increase the share of uh, D2C sales. Is, is, firstly, is that correct? And secondly, if you could share your vision in terms of the various sales channels. Yeah. Yeah, we are, we are expanding the uh, online sales. Uh, that is a very important channel for us for the future as well, because not only you get the sales, but you also get a lot of information around your consumers that you can use to create new products, and new targeted uh, promotion strategies. So for us, the, the uh, online sales channel is really important and to uh, drive not only the sales, but also to build the brand. 
When it comes to export, I think that most export uh, sport companies are suffering a bit from the pandemic that is uh, haunting us at the moment. We, our belief is that that will still be the case from quarter two and quarter three. And we, we estimate that there will be a release for quarter four. But as we say, that uh, the majority of uh, potential growth will come through acquisitions and export markets. Just opening up any, one new country will mean uh, fundamental growth coming into us as a company. And therefore, we are now working and preparing for what's going to happen after the pandemic releases it and the restrictions are gone. So that will be, of course, a very important growth uh, channel for us. When it comes to Sweden, we see that as long as we can grow uh, in line with the market or preferably a bit ahead of the market, like we did now in quarter one, th that is the base fundamental for us. So we need to grow somewhere around 10 to 20 percent, I think, in, in the Swedish market. That's our, what we aim for. And uh, then the rest of the growth will come from export countries and uh, online sales. Right. And, and as you mentioned, it, um, what kind of market uh, growth are you, uh, are you looking at and, and what do you forecast for the coming, say, three to five years? We have uh, not stated that yet. We are working on a financial communication around it. But uh, let's put it like uh, the, one of the owners uh, stated when we went into Nasdaq, uh, we, we should be able to go around somewhere 30%-ish. That is what we're aiming for. Right. And, and market-wise, I assume your 30% your uh, implies uh, some, some market share gains, right? Yes, it does, of course. Right. And then I, I guess as an analyst, I, I couldn't help to, uh, to notice that you're still in red figures. So do you have a, do you have a timeline for, for when you might uh, approach break even and, and also what sort of margin levels uh, do you think uh, is, is sustainable for your business? Yeah, we see that. Uh... If you look into the quarter one report and uh, if we would have grown exactly what we are hoped for to do, we would have shown the black figures, actually. So we are at the moment waiting for uh, the export markets uh, to start delivering the volumes that we are looking for. Uh, we are working hard on the margins, as you saw before. We uh, increased the margin in quarter one with 230 bips versus a quarter one last year. So the job we are doing is uh, paying off. So we are increasing the, mar the margins at the moment, but we need to make sure that the sales volumes are, are kicking in. That sounds uh, reassuring. And in terms of, of COVID impact, uh, I guess this has become sort of a household question uh, nowadays, but uh, how, how did you see that your market uh, was impacted by the pandemic uh, last year and, and in the beginning of this year also as well? As, take Germany as an example. We have a distributor that has a contract with 7,000 uh, gyms in, in Germany and they were closed over one night. So we are just waiting now uh, for them to open up again and then we will start to see the sales coming back. So this is just one example of how, how devastating it could be for our partners out in the world when these kind of restrictions uh, kick in in the local countries. Right. So I assess that the, uh, the net effect was negative, even though I guess the food retail market in Sweden, for instance, was heavily positively impacted uh, by the pandemic. It was, yes, correctly. But out in the world, we see that the different countries have got into restrictions when it comes to specifically where you can find our Lohilo products in fitness chains and in these kind of uh, beauty parlors and uh, I mean, hair cutting salons and stuff like that. Excellent. We're uh, looking forward to, to follow your journey going forward then. Um, and, and with that, I, I think we made it in 25 minutes. And, and uh, yep. I want to thank you, Tyrone, for, for taking the time to, uh, to brief us through this presentation. And I also want to thank the audience for listening in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.